Hey guys, what's going on? It's me, Austin here, and today I'm bringing you guys a showcase video on my four custom Ant-Man minifigures. So, first off, we got Hank Pym, Ant-Man, Scott Lang, Darren Cross, the Seal Jacket, and Hope Van Dyne. So yeah, um, had a great time making all these figures. Some were a little difficult to make, some were fun to make. They were, they were all basically fun to make. It was just a matter of figure, figuring out how to do it and how to uh, work my way past certain problems like lack of reference pictures for one but um yeah that's basically it so um let's just start off with the first minifigure Hank Pym okay so here is my figure of Hank Pym himself and um he was he was also he is um a really fun figure to make but uh a bit more challenging with the face because I wasn't sure which face to start off with and whether I was going to use a painted face or what I was going to do. So yeah, but um, um, the head, I'll start with the head, so it's the Gandalf head that you actually would have got with this Ant-Man figure, but um, the, my huge concern with that was there was no beard and no glasses, and that really made me mad, like the same with um, like 90% of those Ant-Man figure head, so, yeah. Anyway, so this this is my temporary head that I was going to use for him, which is the Henry Jones head from Indiana Jones. And then I ultimately decided against it because, like, if I just use the other head, it still has the same, like, because the, they both don't look exactly like Michael Douglas. But then if after I out of the beard to this and then like the goatee beard and then after I painted the glasses on I think this looks much more like him so yeah anyways so what he's got in his hand he just has um white arms and what he's got in his hand is a little thing of pim particles which is just part of a stud not a stud shooter a spring loaded shooter um cut off and then sanded down and painted the little silver on top and then on his arms, he does have little buttons on each side. And the back is very plain, so I just added a little bit of white shirt at the top. Anyways, and back to the torso, he's got his tie and his vest on. And he's got all the buttons, and he's got the bottom one undone. Cause I don't, know, I don't know if that's like actually how it is in the movie, but. In one of the set pictures, that's what he looked like, and he didn't have it done up. But I'm like, okay, let's do that. And then he's got the stripe on his pants. Then he's got his little pockets there. And, um, yeah, the hair piece is the Robin hair piece from Batman. And it's been used on a few figures as well. Um, like the... God, who was he? It was, I think it was the Doctor in one of the Lego movie sets that was in dark brown there. And then it was used on Robin, like I just said. And um, it was used on a few people. There was, there, I think it was used on like two or three different people from the Lego movie. But anyways, yeah, I'll try and get it to focus. So yeah, there you can see that. There's the head. And I actually think that this looks really nice. Um, like it sure it's not the... Like absolutely the best head for him, but I still think it's an effective head nonetheless. And then the hair piece, there you go. I, as you can see, I painted it white, and then well, actually, sorry, I painted it light gray, and then did a couple brushes of light gray and white over top of it. So yeah, and the glasses are silver. So yeah, that's Hank Pym, and I'll just give you a little 360 before go on to the next figure. Okay, and here is Hope Van Dyne, and um, she was a pretty interesting figure to make. Um, wasn't even wasn't too complicated. It was just a matter of trying to figure out how to go about making her. So um, the hair piece is the Arena Spalco hair piece from the Indiana Jones Kingdom of the Crystal Skull sets, and um, it's been used on a few other figures. I think it's been used in Ultra Agents a couple times and just normal agents, as well as it was I think the most recently. It was used on Claire from Jurassic World, so if you're looking for that hair piece, there's just a few ways you can get it. So yeah, and then the arms are just 
basic black arms with little buttons on the back and the torso is a curved area light torso um, and if you don't know what those are um, they're just basically I think I've got an extra one lying around but I can't find it at the moment um, so yeah oh actually it's right here so yeah um, so as you can see for those of you who don't know what they are they're just basically normal torsos but then they have um, curves in the side for female figures. So yeah, um, and those are from Aerialite, in case you didn't know that. And then there's also multiple resellers you can get them from. But anyways, so I've got um, the detail painted on one of those. And then um, just standard black legs with some dark, like some dark gray shoes on her. Just a little standard gun there. And then if I take it off, she also has a watch, which I believe is from Mini Fig Cat. I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's where I got it. So yeah, as you can see, I painted I painted a little white on there, and then it's got the gold wristband. So yeah, and then her hairpiece is the Hermione Granger hairpiece from the Harry Potter sets. So yeah. And then I actually I painted the red lips on. I just overlapped what they were already, so it didn't look like she was wearing lipstick. And um, if you look on her torso, she's got like a neck, a gold necklace going across there, and then she's got some buttons there. So yeah, and then on the back, basically I um based the back off in the front, basically just off the Pepper Potts torso from the Iron Man three sets. That's what they were based off of. So yeah, um, that's so it, it was, not they. So yeah, um, that's basically it for um, Hope Van Dyne. Now let's give you one last 360 before we move on to the next figure. Okay, and here is Yellow Jacket. So um, Yellow Jacket was really fun to make. Um, so yeah, as you can see, his he's got a like a really big backpack, not backpack, but he's got like the like arms coming out of his back. And actually, I'll take those off right now to show you how they work. So yeah, um, this is what it looks like when it's not attached. And let's click these ones up. Fold them back. So yeah, and then there's a bunch of yellow and um, blue detail on them. And then these ones can fold back. And basically this is made up of entirely battle, a battle droid torso, um, six battle droid arms, and then four of those just little teeth pieces so yeah and then part of a modified just any sort of um, minifigure grip of anything that which which is actually what clips into the back of that so yeah anyways for yellow jacket um, himself um, start with the official figure and um, took all of that weird green yellowish color went over it in black went over it in yellow so it looked a lot better and yeah so here's yellow jacket then the arms are symmetrically painted yeah he's got the details on there and then he's got his little wrist collet So it was actually hard to find reference pictures for um, the sides of Yellow Jacket, so it might be slightly inaccurate. So and then he's got some knee pads on there, and then I painted onto his hand, up there. And on the back, like that. 
so yeah. And then his helmet, I went over all the dark gray that was printed on in black and added some additional details as well as outlining most of the helmet and as you can see what I did up there and then if you take the helmet off it's just a yellow head so so it, I, it actually it makes it look a lot more yellow on the inside so it matches up with the torso because if you just had a normal flesh head in there it looks a little different so but I'll actually still take this off and put the other head on there so this is the head that he had in the set but what I did to it was painted the eyebrows brown don't know if you can really see that though and then painted the neck strap on there now let's put the helmet on him so you can kind of see his eyes still in there so yeah that's that for yellow jacket and I'll throw his Backpack back on him. I don't know why I keep calling it a backpack. It's more of like a arm apparatus thing. I really don't know what to call it. Well, I'll call it, I don't know, through it like his stingers, basically. I don't know. They're what he uses to fight in the movie. So, yeah. And then I'll actually show you what they look like on behind. Because. I haven't seen that before. So, yeah. That's that. And now we'll move on to the next figure. Okay, and so for the final figure, the one you've all probably have been waiting for, Ant-Man. So Ant Man is definitely the mo the figure that I had the most fun with, like because I got a p like his helmet was just I don't know why, but it was just super fun to paint, and then his arms and legs are all just really fun to do as well, so, yeah. Um, anyways, basically, so, where's helmet? I took the normal official Ant-Man helmet, and I sculpted the open mouth piece, like I sculpted it over, and then I proceeded to paint the entire helmet silver, with the exception of the red areas on it. And then I painted all the red areas in black and then went over them in red again, except for the eyes, just so you can still see the figure's eyes right through there. Because um, I felt that was just kind of needed because in a lot of the TV spots and stuff, it shows um, that you can still see his eyes through there and stuff. So I just felt like I should keep that. And then everything on the torso and legs, all the red, all, all the primary red was actually repainted over to match with the rest of the figure so, and then if I just move the arms up so you can see the full leg details there you go you can see that the legs connect and everything like that and then if you look on the arms they're symmetrical and then he's got his um, elbow pads and everything he's got the back of the shoes there there's the elbow pads. And he's got the little red dots on each side. And he's got the little knee pads, I guess those are. And then his shoes like that. And then if we go ahead and take off his helmet, he has a uh, Scott Lang's face. But um this this was one of the few ideas I had because when I, I have a, I had a few other heads that I was considering using, but then ultimately just decided not to. Um, so yeah, uh, here here they all are. Sorry, one second. There. So I was originally going to use the Indiana Jones head, the middle head, and the or the Star Lord head, but decided against the Indiana Jones because he had like the brown beard. So I'm like, okay. Then I just didn't use this one because it just looked too young and just too, like, bland and, like, no character in it, really. And then didn't use the Star-Lord one because it's, like, uh, a few people have used it, but my only concern slash problem with it is that it's Star-Lord's head. Like, if it, if they didn't, if Chris Pratt was in Star-Lord and they still made 
the Jurassic World sets and they made that exact head, I would have used it, but since it's Star Lord and they're both in the Marvel Cinematic Universe and it's just it's just this weird so that's why I decided against it, but um what I proceeded to do was just take like a sand trooper head or whatever. It's like the new stormtrooper heads. They aren't that new anymore, but take on the stormtrooper heads, um remove the like the remove the angry grin and then paint a smirk onto him. And then also I got him a hairpiece. So yeah, and that is way better than Legos part um so about my language here, but crappy as their face. Like this is what we got. So yeah. Also, I do realize that this still isn't the best, but I really hope that Lego steps up their game and brings us a much better head for the Civil War set. So yeah, um, that's basically it for Ant Man. Um, so let me just get his helmet back on. And I'll do a little 360. But um, actually, quickly, I will show you that the details do travel inside the legs. So yeah. Um and that's that. Let's do a final 360. And now we go on to um the ant itself that I upgraded. Here is the like. modified ant and um, basically all I did is um I all I did was um well actually first thing I did was enhance the size of these so that they're a bit bigger. And then the main things that I did were um, to the this front area here. Um, first thing I did was make this actually. And I made this after they released the poster with him on top of the ant dodging all the bullets. So it's just made up of a few normal basic Lego pieces. So yeah. Pr pretty easy to figure out yourself. But, um, and then up there I just swapped some of these pieces out because I had some dark blue pieces from my Iron Man 3 helicopters so, that I made for my um, Malibu Mansion mock even though I don't think they ended up getting put with the video but um yeah and then to get Ant-Man on it it's very simple you just gotta kinda move the wings like this the legs don't fall down so I got the original version of the set with the loose legs. So yeah. Um anyways. Here we go. And then he just grips onto it like this. And then you just kinda place it on there. If he's good to fly away. So thank you all for watching this Ant-Man showcase video. I had a great time making these figures. I really hope you guys had a great time watching this video. Um, I really wanted to make this video shorter than my Age of Ultron video. Because that was way too long. And I just like to say an extra apology for that. So I'm pretty sure this one's going to be at least 25 minutes or under. So yeah. Um, other than that. So. Thank you all for watching. Please write, comment, subscribe. And um, these figures might go through actually a slight bit of modifications after I see the movie. But um, I'll, if, I, if I do do them, they won't be anything crazy. And um, I'll be sure to mention them in one of my update videos. So yeah, um, like I just said, thank you all for watching. Write, comment, subscribe. And um, I gotta go see Ant-Man right now. So see you guys in my next video. Bye.